Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. You know what it means to be converted? What it mean to be converted? So we ask you the question according to the Bible. Knowing all this, what manner of man should you be? Holy man? Okay, a man that followed the law, such and commandments. Yes, right. Right? So we gotta show you what's gonna convert you. Because you can you can leave here knowing this stuff, but still go back to doing the same thing you was doing. But you know, you, you heard this, right? But if you know it, though, you're going to be punished, right? I'm going to show, uh, that's a good question. Say that again. If you, if you know it, you're going to be punished. If you don't do it. If you know, it, right, if you, if you know of this and you go against it, absolutely. Let's get that. Second Peter's 2 and 20. Watch this. Good question. So let me ask you, because it, it sounds like you, are, are you, gonna, are you, you got your mind, are you going to do this or what? What? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. See that he asked the question. He said, That's "If you, too late. you heard he heard, hey, you been marked already, bro. <laughs> you been marked already." He, he said, it. "So if you heard it and you don't do it, yeah, you are gonna be in trouble." Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna ask your question. Yeah, come here, come here, come here. Because it's too late. Look, whether you believe it, you laugh or joking, you already, you already, you was a witness. You already heard. It. That's right. So watch this. The book of Second Peter, chapter two and verse twenty. Uh -huh. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Through the what? Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You stood here and you got knowledge from the, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ out of the Bible. That's right. You got knowledge now. You came here, you gained knowledge, and you're going to leave with more than you came with. Right. Oh, hey, hold on. Hey, come here, come here. Come here. Come here, bro. I got to go. All right, listen to this. Then. Hit it. Hit it. One last thing. They are again entangled therein and overcome. Oh, so if you're going to go back and continue doing folly and see it, and you overcome by that? The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You think you're going through something now? Look at him. Right? It said the latter going to be worse. It's going to be worse. Brief. For it had been better for them not to have known after they have known it. It was better for you to just keep walking up and down the street if you're going to continue doing sin. That's right. Read it again. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it. It was better for you to just keep walking like anybody else than to stand here, hear the word of God, and then continue to go back and turn it up in the world. That's right. It said that your latter end going to be worse than the beginning. That's right. You don't want that, bro. You don't want that nuclear fire. Now, now let me ask you something. Do you believe? All right, let's see something. Here's a test right here. You know what I want, not the hat. First. Let's see, here's the test. And it works, it works. This right here is confirmation right here. All right? We're we'll gonna go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11 and three. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse three. Bring it up. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. So, as you know, it's order when it comes to the Bible. The head of every man is Christ, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. The head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is the most high God. All right? You see the order says God, Christ, man, then a woman. All right? Watch this. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. And he walks off. So that proves every man that prophesied with his head covered, he dishonored his head. All right, my brother, you've been standing there for a minute. I got to show you some laws. How old are you? 20, 26. Okay. Can you grow up here? Let me show you a law. Give me what I want. I, I, I said, hey, bro, don't dip off. You in the blue coat. Come here. 
Come here for a second. You say, you ain't got time for the word of God? No? Okay. Now, 26, you are able to grow a beard. And this is something you may have not known, but you, you being my brother, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna share something with you because I'm gonna show you love. I care about my people. Watch this. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 27. Bring it up. Ye shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. Read it again. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. So there is a law set in place for the so-called black, Hispanic, Native Indians. The Israelites, meaning as a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native Indian man, you are not allowed to cut, cut your head bald, shave your head bald. I ain't talking like, because your head, you good. I'm talking about like Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Steve Harvey, Floyd Mayweather. Skin bald. That's against the law. Right. Yes. Read it one more time for him. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. Shave your head bald. Read. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. Neither shall you shave your face. You can trim it, but it says you're not supposed to shave your beard off. You didn't know that, did you? And that's why I want to share with you, because you're my brother. I heard that. It said, it said, um, like, like with, um, I, I heard that before, because I said, um, like, with a razor, don't go to the razor, with a razor, right? Period. Because, I mean, with clippers, you can shave it close, shave it off, too. But you, if you think about this, when we shave our face, which is forbidden, what happens? Bump up. Just inst instantly judge the beard is a badge of manly dignity. That's right. Let's get that at the bottom of the dictionary. Give me beard. Let's do it. Watch this. I'm gonna show you that this whole this whole earth has been flipped upside down. They want you to think that shaving your face is the way to be. Come clean cut, clean cut. Nah. Watch this. Well, listen up. Listen up. The, the definition of beard. This is the Sound of Big Compact Bible Dictionary. That's all you know. Jesus the Christ had a beard. Paul the Apostle had a beard. John right. the Baptist had a beard. Job had a beard. Right. All right. All the, all our forefathers rock beards. Right. Watch this. Beard. This is the definition of beard. A badge of manly dignity. It's a badge of manly dignity. That's Meaning right. it separates real men from little boys. That's there right. is no confusion of, damn, is that a woman or a man? There's no confusion. because. The beard is a badge, a badge. What's a badge? Something you wear, you wear, that's, that's noticeable. Like this brother on his chest, soldier. Let, let you know he's a soldier, that's a badge. So he's separating himself from brothers, all right? Read. The Israelites were forbidden to shave off the corners of their beards. The Israelites were forbidden to shave their face. We weren't supposed to do that. That's against our custom. That's right. right. That's against right. God's law. So moving forward, brother, grow your beard. All right, that's one law. So I'm gonna let you meditate on that. And as you as you get that one, come back. We are gonna feed you more laws so you get yourself together. You may be wondering why we got these fringes on. He's, he's at the bottom of my garment. Today is the, the Lord's Sabbath day, by the way. The Lord's Sabbath day. Let's get the Sabbath. The Sabbath day. You ever heard of that? What's the Sabbath day? Saturday. Which will be what day? Which day of the week? Saturday. Yeah, but which day of the week? Fifth, fourth, fifth, third, sixth. Second, third. What number day? Yeah. You're not sure? How about you? What day of the week is the Sabbath on? Um, yeah, we know it's Saturday. Saturday, Sabbath, but what day? What number? What number of the day? Is it day one, day two, day, day six? You say six? Okay. Let's see what you got. Yeah. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Bring it on! Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now why would the Lord have to tell us to remember? Bring it he said remember. Bring it out. He, he had to tell us that to remember because remember, we came out of the, uh, the, the land of Egypt. We was defiling the laws, breaking all seven laws for, for a long time. Right. For many years. So he told, when we came out, he told us to remember, bring back some memories, the Lord's Sabbath day. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So you got six days to get your work on, your hustle on, provide for your family, read. Righteously, hustle righteously, right? Read. But the seventh day. What day? 
the seventh day. But the seventh day of the week. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So today is considered the seventh day of the week, which is the Lord's Sabbath. That's That's right. Right. Let's find out what you're supposed to do and not do on the Lord's Sabbath. Bring it out. In it thou shalt not do any work. Did you know on the seventh day, which is the Lord's Sabbath, you're not supposed to be punching no clock? Hello, I'm asking you a question. Did you know that? Right. Hello, I'm asking you a question. Did you know that? You didn't know. Just say like, yes, yes or no. You know now, but you didn't know that before. Brother, listen, we're not here to bash you. I'm here to feed you. That's right. Give you an understanding, all right? I'm not going to say, oh, you're going to go to hell. No, 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 no. You didn't know, but that's what I'm showing you. One more thing. What? What's that? Jesus said, if a lamb gets stuck in a, in a well, is it not right for him to get one brother and swim him out? You paraphrase, I know what you're talking about. You're right. You're right, but that's talking about doing good. Doing good on this Lord's Sabbath day. We talk about working for, for hire, making money. No, hey, bro, don't get, okay, he cut, he cut. I ain't mad at him. He cut. Uh, let, me, let me ask you the question. So, did you know that? You didn't know. Good, so now you know. What about you, brother? Okay, the question is, did you know according to the Bible that the seventh day of the week is considered the Lord's Sabbath day? The seventh day of the week is the Lord's Sabbath. On the Sabbath, let's read it again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. On, on the Lord's Sabbath day, which is today, you're not supposed to be doing no work for hire. You understand? So if somebody hired you and say, you know what? What's your name? Travis, I need you to paint my front room, bro. I'm going to hit you with 500. You, on, the, on today? Nah, you're not supposed to do that today. Cause it, give me, give me that again before that. It says six days. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So you got six days to make your money. You got six days to labor and do all your work. The Lord is a merciful God. He gave us a day off. That's right. He gave us a day off. You're not supposed to work on the Lord's Sabbath day. He says six days labor, do all your work, provide for your family. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And the Sabbath means the day of rest. You're supposed to. Come together with your brother's fellowship, learn the scriptures, all right? And righteousness. Read. In it thou shalt not do any work. Huh? Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter. Ooh, so that means you, your son, your daughter, your wife, anybody that's a part of your household, they not supposed to be on nobody clock working. That's right. right. Read. Nor thy maid servant. If you got a maid, no, give her the day off. She's not supposed to be working either. Read. Thy man servant, you got a butler. He not supposed to be working on the on Lord's Sabbath. Read. That's right. Nor thy cattle. If you got cattle, you old school. You want to plow your land, till the land, plant some stuff. No, the cattle not supposed to be working either. Right. Read. Nor the stranger within thy gates. If you actually have a, a, a slave, a stranger, they got to get on the day off too. Right. Read. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. It took the Lord six days to create everything you see right now. Read. The sea and all that in them is. Everything you see that's in it. He took him six days. Read. And rested the seventh day. He rested on the seventh. So he gave, he gave us a day off. All right? Now you understand that? So now, so now you know that you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. What else you're not supposed to do on the Sabbath? Did you, let's see. This might, now this might throw you a little bit. Did you know that you're not supposed to cook today? You never heard that. Ah. All these restaurants that's up and down Madison that's cooking this food today, y'all going in buying it, guess what you're doing? You breaking the Lord's Sabbath when you do that, meaning you breaking the law. He'll judge you for that. You ever, you ever heard of somebody getting uh, shot up coming out of a restaurant and you don't know why? Judgment. That's judgment. The Lord judges. Well, watch this. Read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 35 and verse 2. Six. You ever heard somebody have a heart attack after just eating, eating a meal? Yeah. Just read. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh, on the seventh day, there shall be unto you an holy day. Hey, today is considered a holy day. That's right. That's where they get the word holiday from. Right. It's a holy day. Today is a holy day. Holy day. We have a holy, a holy day every every week. Right. Which is the Sabbath. Read. Right. A a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. 
Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Oh, who Whosoever do any work therein on the Sabbath shall be what? Put to death. That's why a lot of times people get shot up. And you know, like, but he was a good kid. He was a honor roll student. Coming, coming out of the, going to the club on the Sabbath. Man, he, he was just celebrating his birth, you know? Judgment. Judgment. Read it again. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath. Now, remember I said, did you know? I asked you a question. Did you know you're not supposed to cook? The Bible just said it right there. Read. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the degrees. Sabbath day. So on the Lord's Sabbath, you're not supposed to kindle no fire, meaning cook. That's right. Not supposed to cook. Today is your day of rest. That means you gotta let your body rest. Meaning today, if you ain't gonna eat no cook food, eat your salad. Eat you some fruit. Eat your sandwich. Alright? No cook today. Not today. Read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is yeah. that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow like is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. So, he said, look, we read out the Bible. He said that, let's say, tomorrow, the Sabbath is going to come in. Right? Read. Bake that which he will bake today. So, if you know the Sabbath is coming in tomorrow, you need to start preparing your food the day before. Right? 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 It's called preparation. That's right. Prep. Read. And see that which he will see. Before, the day, or boil it. Boil it. Whatever, however you're going to cook it, cook it the day before. Read. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Now, what you got What you got cooked already, that's called leftovers, You that's what you eat now. It's already been cooked. The Sabbath is here now. Don't reheat it. Don't microwave nothing. Don't heat nothing up. That's right. All right? Cold chicken is actually pretty good. You know, cold pizza. All right, salad, sand sandwiches. Bowl of cereal. Cereal, cereal milk, that's that's fine. You know, so now you learn something. My, our job is to make sure we come out here and feed y'all this Bible, this medicine. We used to scream black power while heroin was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.